Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to paint a simple palette knife bird on a 5x7 canvas. I actually was recently taught how to palette knife paint by my partner in crime, Emiliano Vega, that will be sharing on this channel from time to time also. Right now I'm a one trick pony, I've got birds down, but that's really the main thing I've practiced and been developing and today I'm actually taking my inspiration from a photo my dad took. Um, he loves taking nature photography, especially that of birds. So this should be a really fun project. I hope you enjoy it. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm getting out the colors that I'm going to need from the background. With any kind of acrylic painting, you always want to start with the background first and work your way forward. Now to get some even blending, I am wetting the canvas down first with my palette knife. And because I want the background to be very light compared to the main subject of the bird, I'm putting a layer of white down first and I'm going to blend everything, um, all my background colors with this white. So now when you're doing the background, you can be really fun and abstract with it. So the main focus again is going to be the birds. So I'm just kind of implying some sky. I'm going to add some greens and browns a little bit later to imply some plant life behind it. Kind of like when you do look at a photograph of a bird and a lot of times the background will be blurred and the main subject will be in focus. This is kind of the effect I'm going for here. And so I'm just smoothing back and forth and you'll see when you do quick light strokes with the palette knife, you get more of a kind of choppy marbly effect. But when you spread it flat across making it contact entirely across the surface with the flat end of your palette knife then you get really smooth even blending. So this is something you can really just build up and play with. It's almost like doing cake decorating and playing around with frosting which I'm terrible at by the way. So now to add the implied leaves in the background. I'm using just the tip of the palette knife and just tapping up and down with it and making little circular motions and that's how I'm getting this leafy effect as opposed to the long stretched out streaks for the sky and cloud-like forms in the background that I did earlier. And you see how that light color underneath is still coming through and marbling and blending with everything. And especially because we've added the water first, you can keep working with this and playing with it until it looks how you want it. Now any of that extra paint that's kind of built up on the sides, you can just spread to the edges of your canvas so that you don't end up with a big buildup that dries on the, on the edges. Now in between you want to let that dry, either air drying or you can use a blow dryer to hurry it along if you want to keep working. And now I'm using a smaller palette knife and I'm adding the metal curvature that the bird was sitting on in the photo. And I'm mixing a lot of water with my black because I want to get a nice even thin line and that's going to help with this and I'm just using the water to draw the paint across using the tip of my palette knife so that I can get a nice even thin line. Mixing your paint with water in order to get fine details and thin shapes is very important. You see how when there's not enough water it kind of drags and sticks in the canvas so I just add a little bit more for a more even flow. And you could just go really slowly and carefully, there's no rush. And you can just keep smoothing over now until you have an even edge. And now I'm adding my highlights to the metal that are really going to make it pop out and look three-dimensional. So really simple, I'm just going with some white and using the edge of the tip of my palette knife to just streak a little bit of white into the already wet black. So really by just scraping it across like a knife, it gives that perfect blend where you can tell that it's meant to be a highlight and it makes the shape look really three-dimensional. 
With palette knife painting, for the most part, you're always working wet on wet, and that's how you get the nice blending. And I'm still adding a little bit of water to my white paint, just so it doesn't go on too globby. There's times you'll want it to go on really thick and built up, but for this, we want kind of a gradual transition between black and white. Now again, I've let this part dry first, and now I'm going to go ahead and take a piece of chalk and just outline the shape of my bird. And this just makes it a little bit easier as I'm filling in to keep in mind the shape I want. Um, I'm primarily a drawer, so this is something that helps me out. Some people could just go at it with their palette knife and make the shape from scratch, but I like having this little outline first, and I use chalk because it rubs away. And now I'm just filling in the entire shape of my bird in white first. And you don't always have to use a white base with palette knife painting, but because of the um, light and bright quality of my reference image that I've been inspired by, using a white base made the most sense in this case. But what's different this time is after I have my white base, I'm going to actually let it dry all the way because I don't want the entire bird to come out pastel. I want that light colored foundation to show through a little bit in certain spots, but I don't want everything to turn out mixed with the white. So I've let this dry and now I'm going ahead and getting out my colors I'm going to need for my bird, which are some different shades of red and a ochre color for the beak. And I'll also be mixing in a little bit of a dark umber brown for the shadows. Now I'm starting first making the shape of the wing and again I'm just using my tip with some very watered down black paint to outline the basic shape of where I want the wing to go. And now with my black, I'm using the edge to make some thin streaking. I'm really just laying down a foundation and I'm going to play with this a lot more. And I'm going to blend some white in also. Again, using the edge of my palette knife and just pressing down to make those rounded feathered shapes. Just tapping my palette knife up and down and pressing almost like a stamp. And then I'm using the side edge of my palette knife to get the long, thin streaks for the longer feathers. And just by creating that texture of black and white, there we have our implied wing. A lot of texture, definitely looks like feathers, so it can be as simple as that. Palette knife painting is really impressionistic. So next then, I'm going ahead with my base color of the bright red, and I'm still letting some of the white show through in areas where there's highlights. So now while that's sitting and drying a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the black for the end of the tail. Again, mixing it with water and making streaks with the edge of my palette knife. Very similar to how we did the metal, where I'm laying down the black and then just streaking the white highlights over it to make the feathers look shiny. And now I'm going in with some of my darker red and I'm blending in some of the areas where there's shadows. And I'm using short, quick streaks as I blend the two reds together so that you can see there's an uneven texture left. I'm doing the same thing as I add in the dark umber brown. By using these short, choppy streaks, I'm getting the look of feathers. And I made sure to not take the brown all the way across the bottom edge. I've left the section where the leg is coming down without shadow. So that makes the leg really come to the forefront and it just looks a lot more realistic. Now I'm just brushing some little streaks of white where there would be highlights. Again, short, quick strokes. And I still have a fair amount of water mixed with my white paint. And this helps it be a little bit transparent so that I'm still seeing that red through it from underneath. 
and I'm just really slowly raking my palette knife across the surface with the rounded flat tip. And I'm tilting my knife too on the other side of it where there's some white kind of caked up. I'm going ahead and flipping it over and pressing this down to apply large areas of white paint where I want really strong highlights. And now I'm adding a little bit more of the bright red, but mixed with some of the ochre yellow color and blending in a little bit further. I'm also adding a little more touches of white to the edges of the wings. So right now I'm really just doing my final blending and adding some finishing touches. And with palette knife painting, the more you continue to add dimension with different values of paint and the more you continue to build upon the surface and layer and layer more the more finished and impressive your artwork is going to be at the end so this is something you can continue to play with you don't have to sit down and finish it all in one go you can work on it a little bit at a time over days or weeks or a month even so this is something you can really take your time with and have fun And so now I'm continuing to add highlights to the wing. And then adding darks back over that to balance it out. I'm adding the little dark edge with the umber underneath the wing to again make it pop out, give it that realistic dimension. And so when you want to fill in larger areas and get a lot of texture, that's when you want to use the flat end of your palette knife because you can do that stamping up and down motion or circular motion to get texture. And it'll also fill in your areas a lot quicker. When you want to add little fine subtle details, you can use the thin edge, the side of your palette knife. So you're going to be continuously rotating it as you're working, as you can see here. Now I'm adding the beak, and this can be very challenging to do little small areas like this. So I've added water to my paint, and I'm just using that thin edge. And remember, with acrylics, you can always cover over. So say you're working on a beak, and you make it a little too big, like right there. I think I made this a little too big. It came out a little too far. But that's OK, because guess what? Once it's dry, I can cover back over it with um, some of my background color, and you'll never know. So everything is always fixable. I'm adding some little red blended into the beak, too, because the beak wasn't all just one color in the photo. I'm kind of observing what I see and adding some of those reds and browns that I observe into the beak as well. And now for the feet, I'm also using the umber and Definitely for this, I want it to remain really thin, so I'm just using the side edge of my palette knife for the most part. And I do have some water blended in so that it spreads really easily across the canvas. And I can use that tip of my palette knife to keep drawing the color forward.
And now for the eye, I'm actually going to use the end of a paintbrush rather than the palette knife because I just want a little tiny circle. So I've gone ahead and dotted a black circle with the end of a paintbrush. And now using the tip of the palette knife, I'm just tapping, tapping, tapping with that little tip to add the highlights around the eye and also the reflection that really makes it look alive. I'm just adding some red and ochre also then to blend out that white a little bit so it isn't so extreme. Now there's the highlight also with the end of my paintbrush. It's just really hard to make a tiny circle like that with the palette knife so I figure why not just go with it and use an easier method so and now that I've added the highlights around the eye the beak was looking a little dark so I'm balancing it out and adding some highlights to the beak and I'm also making the line that divides the top from the bottom part of the beak first with some umber and then adding in a little bit of red around that dark umber brown in order to blend it a little more gradually with the rest of the colors in the beak. And now you remember I said I made the beak a little too big so I'm about to adjust that right now so I'm going along the edge of the beak with some white and then blending some green over and I'm just adding a little more trees in the background I actually was looking at the background anyway and thought mm, I want to add some more dark tones at least to the edges of the canvas in the background to balance it out a little more and just add some more interest and make it look more finished so this is a good opportunity to do that so you can always work with mistakes and turn them into something cool happy accents like Bob Ross always says so I'm just making little small tight circular motions with my green and a little bit of the umber and the ochre color and because the canvas isn't wet underneath as originally I'm getting a lot more texture as you can see and the edges of my trees I'm making with the circular motion are really rough but this actually is a good thing because it makes it look more detailed and like these particular forms are closer to us. So we have the hazy, kind of super blended, lighter tree shapes in the background way far back. And now we're bringing some of them forward in a little more detail as well. So this just makes your painting have a lot more dimension and it helps you really be able to see the space. And now you have a completed picture. Like I said, this really, I could keep going on this and add more detail if I wanted, but I decide I'm happy with it now and I'm gonna call it done. This is something, as I mentioned before, you can really keep playing with. So I really hope you try this at home. It's a lot of fun and thank you for watching.